Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this webinar. Uh, today we will present you the cost evaluation tool, which has been developed by our project partner, Rostock University. But before we uh, dig into these details, I will give you a, a brief introduction recap of the Neurodrain project. Before we start, uh, just some uh, practical issues. Um, please uh, mute yourself uh, and uh, feel free to ask questions in the uh, Q&A, uh, which you can see at the bottom. Um, after some of the presentations, we will have a, a short break and then we will handle these uh, uh, questions. Uh, the webinar is currently be recorded and the recording together with the handouts will be put available afterwards on our Neurodrain website and all people who registered for this webinar will receive a link so that you can find it back. Okay, so uh, the Neurodrain uh, project uh, wants to combat eutrophication. Um, so we know that eutrophication is occurring more and more frequently in surface water, and this is linked to um, uh, higher nutrient levels in the water. Uh, and these uh, nutrient sources can be either coming from point sources or from uh, diffuse uh, sources. And in the Neurodrain project, we focus on um, uh, combating uh, diffuse sources from agricultural activities. So um, we know that it is important to take source-based measures. Uh, so we need to try to reduce the nutrient input and the losses from the soil to be, to be able to have less um, nutrient losses in the surface water. Uh, this is an approach which, which has been applied for many years. And the graph that I show you here is a graph from Flanders. And it shows you the percentage of exceedance of the standard of 50 milligram uh, nitrates per liter. And what you can see is when we apply the source-based measures from 2004, you see that we had a gradual decrease in the percentage of exceedance. However, the last years, we again have an increase. This is linked to the dry summers. The, the crops don't grow, they don't take up the nutrients. And then in winter time, you have uh, then the leaching of the nutrients from your, from your parcels into your surface water. Now, the Neurodrain project was already uh, submitted to the Interreg program in 2016 because we see we achieved a steady state. So despite source-based measures, we don't see a decrease anymore, so we need to do an extra effort to be able to reduce uh, nutrients. And in the Neurodrain project, we developed filter systems, which we put, um, which we apply on agricultural re related streams to prevent that these nutrients enter the surface water. We call it end of pipe filter systems. Uh, it's just a term, um, and we consider two types of water. Uh, either drainage water or greenhouse effluent. Drainage water, it's bigger volumes of water with lower concentrations of nitrates and phosphates. It's of course related to the amount of rain that falls and it's a periodic flow. You have it mainly during winter. Greenhouse effluents are smaller volumes of water with higher nitrate and phosphate concentrations. It's a controllable flow because you know the amount that will come each day. And it can either be a continuous flow the whole year or a more periodic flow. We uh, developed different filter systems. And when we look to the P uh, filter system, it's actually an absorption of your phosphates onto iron. And uh, what you see here is a filter box developed by Ghent University. It's a rather uh, simple system. Uh, you actually connect the box to the end of a single drain pipe. Your uh, water rich in uh, phosphorus is flowing from the bottom to the top and it passes a column which is filled uh, here with iron coated sand. And then the um, phosphates are uh, absorbed onto the iron. And this is uh, a picture of this filter material, which is a waste product from drinking water companies. This system has been tested in the field for uh, different, for several years, and the layout of this filter has always been improved. And here you can see a, a picture of the final prototype. 
We have uh, achieved a good removal efficiency. And here in the graph, you can see the results of consecutive uh, years. Uh, the blue bars are total phosphorus. The green bars are dissolved phosphorus. Um, and you see the darker colors are in, lighter colors are out. So the first year we had a 99% removal and then the removal efficiency is gradually decreasing because your filter material is getting saturated with um, uh, phosphorus. Uh, of course, the removal efficiency is also linked with the flow, with the amount of water that needs to be treated and with the concentration of that year, which can vary uh, during the different drainage seasons. We also applied this on greenhouse effluent. It's a very uh, low cost self-made system. Uh, you use the cubitainer, which you fill with this material and you let the water flow uh, through the cubitainer. Uh, the blue bars are the P concentrations of the inlets and the uh, orange bars show you the P concentrations at the outlet. And you can see that we have a very nice uh, removal um, here where you have the, the higher uh, P concentrations and the outlet is uh, showing you that your filter material is saturated. So that was the, the, the sign to renew the material. And when we renew the material, then we had again, a very good removal efficiency. We also um, tried to do an estimation about the costs. We uh, calculated the investment cost and also the operational cost. Again, uh, the final cost depends on the amount of water that needs to be treated and the concentration, the P concentration in that water. But you could state on average that the cost varies between 100 to 1,500 euro per kilogram of P to be removed. Okay, when we then move on to the removal of nitrates, the principle for the removal is biological denitrification in which nitrates are converted to nitrogen gas. Um, in the NeuroDrain project, we mainly focused on the testing of the moving bed bioreactor, which you can see here. It's a, a system in which you fill um, a cubitainer with carriers. You let the bacteria grow on the carriers. You feed a carbon source so that the bacteria have a food, let's say, and then they can start the reaction and you have denitrification. This working principle is actually the same in constructed wetlands and in wood chips filters, but here you use more natural materials. It's a more extensive system, uh, but the reaction principle is the same. We also have results of, of, of this uh, filter system and uh, at Inagro in Flanders, uh, there is an installation in which you can compare uh, the removal efficiency of a constructed wetland uh, compared to an MBBR. Uh, here you see the blue bars. The blue bars is the nitrate concentration in the drainage water. It's indicated in nitrate nitrogen. Um, the orange bars show you the nitrate concentration of the storage pond. So it's already a bit diluted with rainwater. And then uh, the green bars show you the concentrations at the outlet here of the wetland. And here you see uh, at the outlet of the MBBR. Last year, our MBBR was less, uh, less uh, effic uh, efficient um, than the constructed wetland. We had some problems with the pumps, uh, uh, but uh, from the year before, we really had a, a similar um, result. Uh, here you see the results for nitrate removal from greenhouse effluents. Um, blue is incoming water. Uh, orange is again at the outlet you see on average a nice removal below the standard of 11 milligrams. When you have a lower removal efficiency, this uh, is due to the fact that the carbon source was empty. So when you then refill uh, the carbon source, then you have again a good removal efficiency. We also calculated the cost for these filters. Uh, we have the do-it-yourself uh, filter system that you just built, you just uh, acquire the systems and you build it yourself. Or you then have the more sophisticated systems, which we put under the soil to um, uh, 
temper the, the, the fluctuating temperatures, uh, or you have the container, which can also have solar panels. But on average, the uh, cost is about 100 to 150 euro per kilogram of nitrate remove, per kilogram of N removed. Sorry for that. So with that, I would like to conclude just that you have an idea of what we did and what our results are. And now I would like to give the floor to Andreas, who will give you some more explanations about the cost evaluation tool he developed. Yeah, Charlotte, thank you very much for this um, very nice um, introduction and also a very warm welcome from my side. As um, Charlotte already mentioned, I'm from Rostock University and I'm working together with the colleagues from Belgium and from Denmark um, within the NeuroDrain project for several years now. And today I want you to introduce the cost evaluation tool. That means um, what are the co costs if we would install um, the measures that um, Charlotte already mentioned in an entire catchment and what is the what would be the effect of nitrate or phosphorus um, removal for um, an entire for an entire catchment. Um, at the beginning, I want to give you um, a kind of theoretical background as a PowerPoint um, presentation. And then I want to dig in the, the Excel tool I developed and I am um, and I am open for questions. Please ask questions in the Q&A button here in the Zoom meeting. Okay, then the first challenge is to share the screen. And now you should see my PowerPoint presentation. Yes, we see it, Andreas. Yeah, and now it should be um, in the, as a big screen. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Um, okay, I can uh, I can almost skip to this um, first slide because Charlotte already mentioned it. In Neurodrain, we developed um, two kinds of filter and also the other applications um, to remove nitrogen um, were already introduced by Charlotte. And the, the, the main study questions um, for, for my study were, what is the nitrate um, removal or the phosphate removal potential using filters at the catchment scale? And what are the average annual costs? The necessary data for that, um, also for the, for the Excel tool, are the mean annual water flow in millimeters per year. So that means we, um, of course, need the, the contributing area or the area of the drain plots. Then we, then we need, of course, the um, phosphate or nitrate concentrations. We need to know the removal efficiency of the filter. And of course, we should estimate the costs of the filter type in euro per kilogram solute reduction. I want to give you a first example um, for our drain plot for our experimental field site, which we have in near, near Rostock and where we have um, um, a huge number of measurement data since the early 2000s. And on the bottom of the figure, you see the, the, the discharge, the blue line, and also the nitrate concentrations as, a, as, a, as red dots from 2004 until 2020. And as you see, there's a highly dynamic situation with very high concentrations in winter and lower concentrations um, in summer. So this catchment um, or this drainage plot has a size of 
two hectare and with an average nitrate nitrogen concentration of 9.6 milligrams per liter. And let, let us assume that the removal efficiency of our filters vary between 30 or 90 percent. And the costs for the MBBR, let's say it's between five, 50 and 500 euro per kilogram reduction if we would install a wood chip filter to remove nitrate. Um, the costs are maybe between two and 20 euro per kilogram reduction. And for the surface flow constructed wetland, um, let's say it's between five and 95 euro per kilogram reduction. With this, with this information, you can, um, you can calculate some, some scenarios. Um, a kind of um, nomograms to calculate the annual costs based on varying removal efficiency and installations or maintenance costs, so that you have an, uh, have an idea um, which are the costs of varying um, boundary conditions. So here you see three figures um, for the wood chip filter in the left the constructed wetlands in the middle and the MBBR at the, as the moving bed bioreactor at the right hand side. And I want to give you a reading example for the wood chip filter. Um, let's say the removal efficiency um, is 50%. And um, let's say the costs of the wood chip filter would be um, 10, 10 euro per kilogram N reduction. That means that the total costs are 339 euro per year. So you can calculate um, the annual, or you can estimate, these are, these are only estimates. Um, you can estimate the costs for different removal efficiency and also for different costs of the of the filter. Okay, now let's come to to an entire catchment. This is an um, this is an agricultural catchment in in northeastern in northeastern Germany, where the in particular the nitrate concentrations are quite high. And here you see the different polygons are drained, air, drained areas on arable land. In total, we have 435 drainage plots, which is um, 15,065 hectare. And this is, this is nearly 50% of the subbasin area. And the the data from the Excel tour, they are, they are all coming from this catchment, as you, uh, as you see, as you will see in some, in some minutes. So let us assume, let us assume that the annual discharge um, of the drainage plots uh, eight, uh, between 18 and 150 millimeters per year. These are reasonable numbers, and the nitrate nitrogen concentrations vary between three and 15 milligrams per year. And um, we want to implement filter technologies in drainage plots with the drainage con with the with the nitrate nitrogen concentrations are. Uh, um, greater than 10 milligram per liter. And MBB, MBBRs are suitable for small sized drainage plots, not for large ones. And let's install these MBBRs at small size drainage plots smaller than two hectares at costs of um, between 500 and 500 euro per kilogram N reduction. Um, the which 
the wood chip filters could be installed in medium sized drainage plots between two and 10 hectares at costs of two and 20 euro per kilogram N reduction. And, and the surface flow constructed wetlands could be installed in large sized drainage plots larger than 10 hectares at costs between five and 95 euros per kilogram N reduction. The removal efficiency of the filters are also again between 30 and 90 percent. So um, with this information, I um, calculated um, several scenarios. In total, um, we did 100, 100 runs were conducted, were conducted, and all the mentioned values um, were randomly selected within the given ranges. And here you see um, the results and you see um, uh, quite a large number of um, box plots. I don't want to go into the details of um, every um, of each box plot, but maybe I want to focus on on two figures. The first one is uh, red um, with the red bo box plot. If you would install these filter technologies under the mentioned boundary conditions, um, the reduction of nitrate losses would be there, um, would be around 50 percent. Um, it depends it depends on the it depends a little bit on the yeah it depends on the removal efficiency so we have so we have a reduction of let's say between 10 or 20 percent on the entire catch for the entire catchment outlet and um, the costs would be somehow um, between two and three million euro per year for the entire catchment So, so I want to I want to already um, conclude with this theoretical um, background, I would say, and we have to we, we have to make the um, it must be clear to all of us that um, due to many hardly predictable costs and necessary simplifications, single calculations are mostly to be understood as rough estimate as rough estimates. Therefore, we need scenario analysis using multiple calculations that can provide us a realistic range of expected costs and nutrient reductions that policymakers and stakeholders can work with at a watershed level. And the results suggest that filter systems, if installed widely, could help to reduce the nutrient pollution in surface water significantly. The installation and the maintenance of the filter systems, however, can be very costly. But what also is clear, that the filter systems will always be site measures and will not replace the necessity for of, a, of sustainable agricultural systems. That should we always keep in mind. So, um, um, should I stop now and have a, a minute for to answer questions, or should I bring this um, last slide with the introduction of the Excel tool. Charlotte, what do you mean? Let's check if there are questions already. Yes, I see one. Ah, okay, Stani. Yes, Stani uh, asked, if you are taking seasonal variation in removal efficiency of the filters into uh, account because and there are high nutrient losses during winter and then and filters are functioning uh, less well uh, because of the colder temperatures. Are you taking? 
are you taking seasonal oil emission? But yeah, we don't do and eh? we just take an average and eh? we, we say in general a filter um, can remove 50%. Yeah, let's we say. Take, yeah. Mm -hmm. We take an we take an we take an average. Of course, this is very this is very important. Um, this is very important questions um, because um, the efficiency of the filter is dependent um, on the concentration level and also on the water flow. Because of the water flow, the um, because of the, water, the, the the retention time of the polluted water in the filter um, depends also on the water flow. So. Um, we made some, um, we had to make some simplification, but seasonal variation, at least, at least in, um, in our case here in northeastern Germany, the drainage pipes usually um, fell dry during summer. Yes, and a study also for everybody to know the removal efficiencies that we uh, report here are the measured removal efficiencies during the drainage season. So it is actually, let's say, the winter season that we measure. So when we say for the MBBR, we have an average removal between 60 and 80%. This is the measured winter uh, removal efficiency. So we, we, we use these values. Yeah, and, 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 and also, if you remember the, the, um, the slides of Charlotte who showed um, the removal efficiency of um, different years, um, it is also clear that the removal efficiency um, vary between years. And also, it depends on many factors, for instance, the hydrometeorological um, conditions, for example. Um, okay. Let's um, dig into the cost evaluation tool. This is actually a quite simple tour, it, um, tool. It may look a little bit complicated, but in fact, is it not? So um, an Excel tool was developed to estimate the costs and impact of technical measures um, for nitrogen and um, phosphorus. And the Excel data can be spatially visualized in the open source um, program QGIS. And the input data are the contributing area or the catchment area or the drainage plot area, whatever you, um, you consider, the annual discharge and the mean annual solute concentrations. The output data uh, e.g. Uh, for example, the reduction of the solute or the pollutant in kilograms per year or in kilograms per hectare and year, and also the costs of the measures in, um, in euro per year and also in euro per hectare and year. The data will be aggregated for the entire considered catchment. And what is also important for um, catchment managers, for instance, is you can do um, several scenario analysis. For example, what would be the cost to reduce the solute loads by 50%? And um, multiple figures will um, illustrate always the results. Then on the next slide, I prepared some um, some screen some screenshots, um, but I only want to show show them if the Excel doesn't work. So I would I would skip now this um, I would I would finish now this PowerPoint presentation, and I, I directly um, would like to switch into the Excel file. Okay. <laughs> this um, the Excel file consists in general 
of four different sheets. There's another help sheet and a disclaimer sheet, but that is not important now. Um, in the first sheet, um, the drainage prop, the drain plot properties, um, we we enter the characteristics of the of the drainage plots, and then and then I prepared um, three sheets that show the results um, with different settings. So I called them basic settings, drain, um, basic settings, advanced settings, and expert settings. So in in the Excel in the Excel file, you can um, you can fill in numbers everywhere where the numbers are written in in red and the cells are white. The other, the gray, the gray cells that are that are calculations. So we have we have here as basic as um, here you see, as I already mentioned, the the catchment I I showed in the PowerPoint presentation contained 435 drainage plots that are the um, so you have. Um, 435 um, lines. And these are the individual drainage plots. I have to mention that real numbers are, is the size of the area. The discharge rates, the concentrations of nitrate nitrogen and the phosphorus concentrations, these are randomly but reasonable values, because we, of, of course, we don't have data for all these drainage plots. So this is an this is an example for the catchment area. Yeah. Okay. And then we would fill in here the discharge data, the concentration of nitrate nitrogen. And the concentration of phosphorus. Um, you can you can either um, fill in the nitrate data as um, nitrate or as nitrate nitrogen. Yet here you can on this cell you can you have either to fill in NO3 or or NO3N for your convenience, I would say. Um, then also you um, would fill in here the phosphorus concentrations and this, these informations you can calculate, of course, by combining um, by combining discharge and concentrations, the, act, the actual loads, you have here the, um, in this column F, the losses of nitrate nitrogen in kilogram per year. And because we have the, we have the area, we can calculate the loads in kilogram per hectare in year and the same for P. And in this line, you see the data um, for the entire catchment as an as an overview. And on this different figures, the data of the, the, the basic data are visualized. The drainage plot areas, the, dis the discharge, and also the nitrate nitrogen concentration and the phosphorus concentrations. Okay, then let's move to the second sheet, to the basic settings, and let's come to our filter systems. So on this sheet, you can um, define a reduction, a reduction target for the for the different filter systems. 
um, here I, I filled in 50%. And let's say the costs for the MBBR to remove nit nitrogen is 80 euro per hectare, um, 80 euro per kilogram reduction. For the wood chip filter, it's 50 euro um, per kilogram reduction. And for the constructed wetland, it's 50 euro per kilogram reduction. This is for nitrogen and for the P filter, let's say the reduction target is 50% and the costs are 50 euro per kilogram reduction. Here we have on this um, sheet, we have a lot of more, we have a lot of more columns. Um, you know already these columns because these are the same as for the drain plot properties. Here on these um, columns, J, J and K, the reduction targets are defined. They are the same for every drainage plot in this case, because we defined 50% um, or let's say maybe 60% for N. Um, and um, if we have, if we would define these reduction targets, we can also calculate the, the future loads. If we, if the, the filter technologies would achieve the reduction, the reduction targets, or it's the same as the, like the reduction efficiency of the filter, then the future load would be as for as uh, as you can see here you the target yeah here you see the target losses for nitrate nitrogen per kilogram per year per kilogram per hectare and year and also the same for phosphorus and then we have four different um columns where you see the reduction. This is this is um, this is actually the same as you see here, for instance, for nit for for nitrogen in this figure. You see the actual losses here on this red bar. Then you see the target losses on this um, light green bar and the reduction of nitrate nitrogen on the dark green bar here. Um, uh, then you see here the area weighted loads before and after the measures. So, um, so these, this data of this figure, I hope you can see my mouse. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, okay. Um, on this figure, the, the, these data are divided by the area. It's the same for phosphorus. And, um, and here you and then you have here um, a lot of columns um, that are related to the costs of the different measures. You see here the costs of the different measures in Europe uh, kilogram reduction for the P filter, for the MVBR, for the wood chip filter, and for the constructed wetland. And then you can calculate the annual costs either per either per year or per hectare and year. And this is also here graphically illust illustrated. Okay. <clears throat> then here you have some some different figures where you see um, the the reduction um, the reduction with different um, this is different reduction um, efficiency of the of the measures 
And um, but I want to go too deep into this details here. Um, I just want to I want to show you here um, these these figures where you see um, the actual loads for the um, the red dots and the future loads in the green dots, also for nitrate nitrogen and for phosphorus. And here you see the the different the different costs. And I should mention that um, each each dot represents one drainage plot. So we have in total um, four hundred. 35 um, red dots and 435 green dots. Um, and we could we could, for instance, now um, yeah do a kind of um, scenario analysis and let's say let's say um with these with these settings the reduction of nitrate nitrogen is uh, 100 uh, uh, around 110 thousand kilogram per year and let's say um, this is this is not enough we need we need at least 150 thousand Kilo. We, we have to reduce at least 150,000 kilograms per year. So we can do um, um, a kind of what if analysis. So let's say let's say the reduction should be 100. 150,000 kilogram per year. And the question is, what should be the, um, the efficiency of the, of the filter? If this is the only um, boundary condition. That means if we want to reach a reduction of 150,000 kilogram per year, um, then the, our filters should have um, a reduction efficiency of nearly 80%. So now that was quite an easy example um, with the basic settings. Um, now let's come to the advanced settings that are more um, yeah that are a little bit more complicated but that are related to the um, situation I showed I showed in the um, PowerPoint presentation. So let us let us assume that the um, the the table here below. Um, they look it, it it looks the same yeah so there's nothing actually the same columns um but different different numbers but the the inputs here here on the head are different um here you can um de define certain areas for instance where the filters should be installed for instance the let's say the mbbrs should be installed in the smaller areas the wood chip filters in medium-sized areas and the wetlands in large areas um, and you can also define um, that all the, the the measures should only um the filters should only installed if in drainage plots where the nitrate concentrations exceed a certain level here it's 10 milligrams per year and um yeah in this in this line you can um again define 
the costs per kilogram reduction. And here you can define um, different reduction efficiencies for the individual measures. So the same is for is for phosphorus. So that means if you have a configuration, a configuration like this, let's look for instance at the at the costs that means that you see here a lot of a lot of zeros um and some numbers here you see um on the first drainage plots there are only numbers greater zeros for the MVBR. That, that should mean that we have on this drainage plot a concentration greater than um, 10 milligrams per year, and we have a small we have a small catchment, smaller than um, two hectare. Is that true? Yes, this is this is true. So for the wood chip filters, um, there are zeros here, and for the surface flow constructed wetland, also zeros. Then you have some lines where you where everywhere is a zero. That means that uh, that the nitrate concentrations are um, lower than ten milligrams per year. Is that true? Yes, this is true here. And so you can play with the um, with the different with the different numbers. Um, so that means um, that in at each in each drainage with this configuration, that means that in each drainage plot will either um, an MBBR filter will be installed, a wood chip filter. Or a surface flow constructed wetland. And if we, yeah. And here you see the, the, again, the costs for the different filter systems. And here you see a kind of blue line, but this is not a blue line. These are many, many different um, different dots where the costs are zero because in these drainage plots, no filter will be installed. Only, only in these um, in these um, drainage plots, a filter would be installed. Um, also, also for this advanced setting, we can do um, a, vari a variety of scenario analysis and play with the numbers to get an idea what are the costs if we change the settings or what are the reduction if we change the efficiency or the area or the concentration. And I want to give you just um one example let's say the maximum costs per year should not exceed 2 million euro and and then and then the question is um what is the what is the maximum of the costs of the individual measures? Then we could do um, a solver analysis. The tar the target is the are the total costs. They not exceed um, two two million euro per year, and we change. Um, maybe uh, yeah, you see everything, and we change 
we change the um, we change the costs of the different measures. And let's see if the solver solves the solution. Okay, let's say okay. And here, um, here you can see um, the result for this scenario analysis. So, um, yeah, what should I say? And so, um, so you can do a lot of different scenario analysis. Um, it depends on what your what your question is. Um, now I already want to come to the what I, what I called the expert setting. Um, here, here you can you can configure each drainage plot individually. So you can define a removal efficiency for each um, each drainage plot and you can define um, the the costs for each drainage plot um, yeah so 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 in this case you are more flexible and here I just want to give you also um, just a small example not a calculation um, example but a, a selection example, I would, I would say. Um, but this is, yeah. This is, um, I included here some, some, some filters, and you can, <clears throat> you um, let's assume we only are, we only are interested in cons in. Drainage plots where the nitrate concentrations are larger than 30 milligrams per liter. And the reduction, the reduction is larger than 15 kilograms nitrate per year and hectare. So then you, then you have in total um, eight drainage plots left. So you can do some, um, a lot of different selections with these filters. And um, <clears throat> and at this point, um, I would like to um, I would like to stop, and I can imagine that there are some some questions where I'm happy to answer before we we, we switch um, just briefly to the connection with the QGIS. Okay, uh, Andreas, thank you uh, so far for your uh, introduction. So, uh, if people have questions, feel free to. Uh, Hello, there is a question from uh, Peter Lorkowski. Uh, I see, I see, I know. Uh, I just wanted to say if there are other questions, feel free to tighten or to unmute yourself and to ask it uh, live. But the question of Peter Andreas if, is if we consider a differentiation between the initial installation costs, so the investment cost, and then the recurring costs, so the operational costs. And if we don't do it, if it would be reasonable or to consider it to include this as well. Um, no, I did not. Uh, I did not uh, consider a differentiation between in um, initial installation costs and recurring costs, um, because um, installation costs can be very recurring costs can be very. But to do some kind of um, um, of 
in fact, in, in fact, what I did is a kind of, of model, um, a kind of model. What would happen if we would install these filters um, in at one? We don't know the exact costs for each each filter we would install. Um, the costs will be will be different, and also the um, the reduction efficiency will be different. These are. I think these are reasonable estimates. Um, if you look on the in the literatures, the final costs of filters are always given in euros per kilogram solute reduction. So I don't want it to make it too um, too too complic too complicated because that it does not make sense because the um, because they differ from um, from from case to case, so that makes um, and and therefore it it is it is necessary to to calculate with different costs to have a range of the costs that can be expected. But what you could do, if you really would like to know this, is when you go to either your basic settings or your, or your advanced settings, if you know the investment costs and you have all the data of your catchment, you could fill in your investment costs in the, in the areas where you need to fill in your own values. Uh, and then you would need the total costs for installation. And then in the next exercise, you can fill in your operational costs and then you would know your yearly costs. So, so it's it's up to you to a bit play with, with the numbers and to, yeah, to find. Yeah, um, that, is, that is absolutely true. The, um, this would be, um, you cannot calculate the costs with this tool. Um, um, the, you cannot. I differ. I, I did not differentiate the the initial installation costs and recurring costs in this tool. But of course, one could do it in advance. Yeah, and then fill in the results in this tool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope this more or less answered your question, Peter. I don't know if there are uh, other questions. Let's check. I'm not quite sure if everybody has understood what I have done. I hope it is clear to everybody. There are no more reactions, so I suppose it's clear to them, yes. Well, there is another question also. Uh, when you can so, you late the costs per reduction it's per the costs per reduction per year so divide by life expectancy um when you can it's per year right yeah so divide by life expectancy i don't really understand the question um, uh, the, the, the question is, for example, so we estimate that the P filter box can remain for 15 years in the field. Yeah, that is a usual, that is a normal number of yeah, 15 yeah, years. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just like an estimation, 10 yeah. years, 15 years. So what you calculate here is the cost to reduce a certain uh, uh, nutrient load per year. And then the question is if you should still divide it and also by the life expectancy uh, because your system will work for 15 years or, or 10 mm. years uh. but no. uh, here we don't take into account life expectancy it's really the actual cost to reduce that amount of nutrients yeah 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 mm -hmm. okay Then there is uh, another question uh, from Martin. So when you go to the tab of the expert setting, yes, and you look at the costs, um, if the 
Is uh, the should, I, I should, I, sometimes I can't hear you. Okay, but uh, feel free to read it also yeah. yourself. So I, I will give you a minute to read, to read it. Yeah, I, I, I read also for myself. Um, if you take this and look. Okay, I have to read again. If you take them, look at them. Hmm. Measures. I don't know, Charlotte. Can well, you... what I, how I understand it is so in your advanced settings, you can type from which uh, starting concentration that you want to take action. So here in yeah. the example, we said from the moment the concentration is 10 milligrams of nitrate, yeah. we really want to put a filter. Eh? Yeah. So it, it's more like an average calculation on your catchment. Then it yeah. calculates how many filters you need and what would be the cost. When you go to the advanced setting, the expert settings, yeah. you really work on the size of a plot and you can really change for each plot. Okay, yeah. here in this plot, when I have exceedance uh, above 10, I want, uh, uh, yeah, I want a filter if it's above 15. So you can work more uh, detailed. And the question is then, if you work more into detail, probably your costs will be higher. But I don't think you can say it like that. Eh? It's more like how you fill in yeah. which boundary conditions that you put into the system will give your final costs. And it might be sometimes higher. It might be also sometimes lower. It all depends on the on the settings you put you give it. Eh? Yeah, this is this is true. For instance, here what I fill in the numbers I fill in here is you have in each drainage plot, um, for instance, um, MBBR costs, wood chip filter costs, and surf, uh, and, and and wetland costs. Yeah, that that um, in, in in practice um, you wouldn't do this. Let's say you would decide in the first um, for the first drainage plot, for instance. You only want a wetland, then you would fill in here um, zero for wood chip filter or MBBR, and then the constructed wetland would remain, for instance. Yeah, the, the, the this sheet is just to uh, to to that the to give the user the maximum and flexibility. Yes, yes, I think. Uh, yeah. Already with advanced setting worksheet, you already uh, get quite far, uh, yeah. And then there was another question, if the tool is freely available. Uh, so yes, it's- um, Yes, of course, this is freely, freely um, available. I would quite happy if, if somebody um, would use um, this tool and, and, and would give some advice how to, um, how to improve the tool or, and everybody can change the tool for um, for um, him or herself. Um, when we give the tool to to everybody, the gray cells will be will be blocked initially. So you can only type um, into the the white cells with the with the red numbers, but um, but but however, if you if you um, fill in a password, then you can do whatever you want with the tool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the tool will be available on our Nuridrain website. So later on, you can then just uh, access uh, the Excel and use it for your own. Uh, yeah, your own calculations. Yeah. Yeah. Then I I I I I think I will I will I will leave only five drainage plots or so and not such a large number. Okay. 
for instance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think we can move on to the QGIS. Uh, yeah. Unless there are any other remaining yeah. burning questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are not. Go ahead. Uh, we still have time, so I am. I just want to give you um, maybe I'm maybe I want to give some uh, two more examples um, and then we switch to the QGIS to make uh, it clear for the for the audience now, for instance here as the when if we go back in the I hope it works um, if we go back to the advanced settings and here we the red dots are the actual loads the green dots are the loads after the measures and and now let us assume we um, we only take action for drainage plots if nitrate nitrogen concentrations are higher than 20 percent um, 20 milligrams per liter so then then you see only green dots that makes that the um, that the future that the future load is identical to the actual load um, because we don't have um, because we don't have drainage plots with concentrations larger than um, 20 milligrams and that means if we go further, further down yeah we wouldn't install any um, any filter systems for that for that extreme case Okay. Then then let's move to the QGIS. I'm not I am not quite sure if everybody is familiar with GIS or here in in particular with QGIS. Um QGIS is a is a free um, is a free tool. You can everything um, do with it the same like Arc um, GIS, and you can install it um, on your private computer. And it is um, it's um, a real open source product. This is also the reason why I use this. And we have a I created. Um, a file or a QGIS project. And here you see a lot of um, some, some, some layers, but in fact, the data behind are only the, the drainage plot, the drainage plots of the Excel file you saw before. For example, here, mm, let's open the attribute table. And here you see you have 435 objects. So that means these are, these are exactly the same drainage plots as for the Excel file. So this is a, um, this is a shape file. And here you see the um, nitrate nitrogen concentrations of the individual drainage plots and this shape file so this gist file is connected to these different excel sheets um, and and then you can if you connect the Excel data with uh, QGIS shape file, you can actually do what whatever you want. You can create maps, for instance, here you see um, 
a map of different nitrate concentrations or nitrate these are these are in fact the basic data so here this is all the, the drain plot properties so i grouped here i grouped four different layers um, that are related to the drain um, drain plot properties here you see the um, now you see the loads nitrate loads or phosphorus concentrations or what or whatever and um the same is for the for the basic settings here you would see if you are interested the costs of the different measures um Um, and also, yeah, the reduction. Let's go to the advanced setting, for example. <clears throat> so here you see, for instance, for the advanced settings, the nitrate nitrogen reduction in kilogram per hectare and years with different um, green colors. And maybe you only want to want to see the 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 drainage plots with the greatest effect. Then you, for instance, then you can only show. Can only show let let you only show the drainage plots where the uh, nitrate nitrogen reduction is greater than eight point seven kilogram per year. And what what I like is that these that these kind of maps are directly related to the to the Excel file. So we are we are humans and we we, we are thinking we are, we like to visualize our results. So it's easier to to find the results. And let's let's make some diff. Um, let's change the settings here. So let's say. Um, the reduction target is lower or the reduction efficiency let's say it's only 30 percent um then we save the file i hope it works so um, Then we say refresh, and then I hope this map will change. I switch it off and switch it on, and nothing happened. Ah, yeah, <laughs> it will. It works. Yeah, yeah. Um, we reduce the reduction efficiency of the filter that moves that that means that the removal of nitrate nitrogen in the individual drainage plots um, is lower that means that the colors are not so dark green anymore yeah so the 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 excel data are directly related to the um to the to the QGIS data. And also here you see in the, as you remember, as you probably probably remember, um, we said in the advanced setting that the wood chip filter will only be installed um, for medium sized drainage plots. And not for the others. That um, that means that only in this 
Drainage Plots um, a wood chip filter would be installed at different costs, for instance. If we would change here the setting, uh, let's say, yeah, let's say just just to give a number. Also for large areas, we save it. And then let's refresh. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then, um, then also the, um, the 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 data in QGIS will be refreshed. Yeah, will be adapted to the Excel data. There and now you can do a lot of things, whatever you want to do with the QGIS. Yeah, I could give a lot of more examples, but in fact, that's. That's it. It's just one shapefile, and the the shapefile is connected with the Excel tool, and then everybody can do whatever um, he or she wants. So, and then um, that's why I would um, like to stop at this point. Okay. And I'm happy for questions. Okay, thank you, Andreas. I think anyhow, the best way to learn to use this tool is to, to just try it for yourself and to, to see uh, how far you can get. And uh, I think we can say, if you start with something and you're stuck, uh, Andreas is available. I think you can always send him an email to organize, for instance, a short Teams meeting so that he can try to help you out. Uh, for me, for instance, uh, QGIS, it's also not known, but uh, I mean, by following and seeing which buttons he is, he is sticking, I think it's quite straightforward, but you just need to know what to do. So anyhow, if you want to use it, feel free to use it and feel free to contact us if you need some, uh, yeah, some guidance uh, on how to use it. Are there any questions for Andreas. A lot of people can or raise their hand or uh, yeah, type their question in the Q&A. And if there is a hand, I will give them uh, audio so that they can ask or raise their question. Uh, yeah, okay. Any question? So far, I don't see any raised hand, uh, neither questions in the Q&A. So people feel free to uh, to question or to, uh, to, give a, to give us a question. <clears throat> well, if you have later questions, as Charlotte said already, you can, of course, mail me. Yeah, and uh, I also want to... Um, just shortly also um, explain so in, in Flanders we don't have drainage maps so we don't we don't know which parcels have a drainage system we don't know the outflow of these drainage systems so we need to use this tool in a slightly different way um, what we do have in Flanders is a quite extensive nutrient measuring network which is measuring uh, the monthly nitrate and uh, orthophosphate concentrations in the ditches. And these points have been chosen in such a way that they are really related to agricultural activities. So there's no interference of, for instance, households or industry. Uh, so we know that this is related to agricultural activity. From these measuring points, we can uh, deduce the the related surface area. 
And our uh, Flanders Environment Agency uses a model, the Pegasus model, to model uh, flows, for instance. So by collaborating with the Flanders Environment Agency, we can find the correct numbers to fill in the Excel tool, which can then, of course, help us to, to decide which measures should we take and how much will they cost. So, so I can imagine that not everybody has all these data on the shelf, but I'm pretty sure because all member states measure a lot, they need to report a lot. So th these data are somewhere. We just need to, to find them and to fill them in in the tool because of course the tool is based on data. So you need to have the data to, to be able to do some uh, calculations. Yeah, the, um, Charlotte, if I interrupt you, the tool is based on data. This is, of course, true, but also any calculations we want to do, with, if we want to install um, technical measures, we also need data. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, I hope it was clear for you. So uh, later on, you will receive an email with a link to this recording, with a link to the handouts, and with also a link to the Excel tool and the uh, QGIS uh, software. And then I would say, go ahead, try to, yeah, if you want to uh, study a certain small catchment, feel free to test it. And uh, we are always open um, to, uh, to give feedback and to help you. So we will also mention the email address of Andreas so that you can contact him in case of questions. Charlotte, okay. I see there is a question, uh, ultimately okay. from Stefan Kent. Yeah, uh, Andreas, how do you cope with crop rotation? Depending on the crop, the end residue differs. So where do you place the filters then? Um, I can also uh, um, answer if you want to. Yes, Charlotte, if you want, yeah. Yeah, so it's true. Yeah, you have crop rotation. And of course, one year you can have a higher uh, end outflow than, uh, than other years. Uh, however, we do know that in certain areas, there is crop rotation, but the type of crops that are rotating, uh, for instance, if it's the vegetable production area, it's always a rotation of, of different vegetables. So your end discharge remains quite high, but it, it can be that in certain cases, it, it is lower, it's another type of crop. Uh, so then your filter system will also uh, be, yeah, will, it depends on the flow and on the concentration, there will be another removal efficiency. Um, so yeah, that, that will be um, a, a different value in that year, I would say. Yeah. I yes. also want to answer um, this question. Um, as far as I understood this question um, is that the, the, the nitrate concentration in the drainage plot or in a ditch are related to the crops that are growing on the ground. Is that true? Yeah. And we have um, in my PowerPoint presentation, I showed you our um, experimental field site in Dummersdorf in northeastern Germany, where we measure since um, 2003. And there we have a typical um, crop rotation for our region, which is in fact um, barley maize, wheat, and rape. Yeah, these are the most and uh, sugar beet sometimes. And and also the the, the fertilizer applications um, went down a little bit um, during the last 20 years. And we absolutely, there is also a paper I can show you um, or I can send you if you are interested. And we studied the relationships between land management and um, nitrate concentration in the drainage system and also in the ditch. We could not absolutely, we could not find any significant rela relationships between land management 
um, or crop management or crop rotation and concentrations um, in the ditch or in the drainage pipe. It is absolutely clear at our, um, at least for our region, that the magnitudes and the dynamics of nitrate concentrations and loads, they are um, they are mostly dependent from the hydrological and also meteorological conditions. Yeah, that is at least the our case. I don't know, maybe there are other cases where there are relationships, but we couldn't find them. Okay, yeah. That's indeed a very interesting uh, paper from Rostock University, which uh, clearly showed based on 20 years measurements uh, that there's yeah, no clear link, let's say. Okay. There is another question also from Peter Lorkowski. Yeah. I will let Andreas answer. Um, no, no, I don't. I, I don't. I don't think. In an in an ideal case, you have um, drainage maps. Actual drainage maps. They would be uh, much more precise than than the digital um, elevation model. I think it is very. Um, it is um, very difficult to to derive um, the contributing area of the drain collector using a digital elevation model. So usually you should need where the drainage pipes are in an ideal case. But if you don't or, have or it, also if you don't if you don't have it, you can you can expect the the area because the area also depends on the on the on the discharge if you um if you measure for instance the flow of a drain collector for a drainage season let's say from november to april and then you expect several areas and when you expect for instance one area and then you calculate then you calculate um 400 millimeters of drainage discharge then it is much too much yeah then the number is then the number is too high that means that the um drainage area is in fact greater I'm not quite sure if everybody has understand my answer, but um, to make it to make it short, um, if you have flow data for one season, you can somehow estimate the contributing area. And the numbers, um, the, the, the discharge numbers for um, for a season for a drainage season they are quite they are quite similar here in northeastern germany as also in 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 belgium i think this is around yeah around 100 or 130 millimeters or so would you yeah. agree would you agree charlotte yeah dominique said that an average of 100 millimeters per year is yeah. is, is a good value Okay, that, that, yeah. that means you can estimate also the contributing yeah. area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you are welcome. Okay, thank you. So with that, I would like to conclude this webinar. Thank you for joining. Uh, and then uh, let's hope to see you later then, perhaps at our final. Uh, webinar as closure events of our project uh, which will be in may and then um, thank you for being present and feel free to contact us later on thanks a lot bye bye bye, -bye. thank you very much